um, before we start, just wanted to uh, inform you all that we will be um, recording this se session. We want to get your consent. So this uh, uh, today's session is about consent. So I just want to make sure I get all of your consent before I start recording. Uh, if I like any text or else uh, I'll just start recording this uh, session. Okay. Hey, record voice again, sir. All right. Record voice again, Ritika. Oh, so oh, I just started. I started. Okay. Thank you. Got it. Got it. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Ritika. All right. So, uh, welcome everyone to the fifteenth web series of Nepal Mental Health Research. Um, on the uh today, say I'm wrote title say. Ethics through art lessons from developing a visual participatory consent method with peer researchers in Janapur, Nepal. Ani uh, as I say, I'm Sangha Dr. Joanna Marisha Nununsa. Want to introduction say more illegal dinner. Kina wa name mo pasidrishli like say want to other am sangha introduction karan launchu. So um first much introduction ma mere naam sawar the right. I'm um, say George Washington University. I'm say as a research scientist ko rup ma kam karsu. Ani kaile kai say uh mere colleague. Go blaggy like say more your session or say cover versus so Ritika so let's say normally your session cover versus as a say school cat is okay currently got the head is a most a cover girl yeah go to um so before I mean main presentation but I know I did say more quickly yeah me John carrier is it a paralyze it in a chance to about some of the reminders uh recording go could I'm the organ and go is a Kim I'm the session record got some and I'm so is another like your recording or say but awesome such a day I'm real social media channels YouTube Twitter I'm up and I mean say your recordings a post person uh your webinar say I mean every week every month go uh third Wednesday say I mean say your webinar they got some so every week beside a dosa the hard luck I'd say uh or it may not go third week say I mean say you uh webinar they got some on your webinar say I mean a TP in Nepal resource was in the university for so I got ever got it a good some अनि हामीले यो वेबिनार चाहिँ अर्ली करियर रिसर्चर्स सर्चमा चाहिँ फोकस छम सो हामीले चाहिँ यो वेबिनार को थ्रु बट चाहिँ डिफरेंट स्पीकर्स हरु ले आउँछ अर्ली करियर रिसर्चर्स मिड करियर अथवा टप करियर सबै जनाले चाहिँ हामी चाहिँ इन्क्लुड गर्छम अनि इच वेबिनार चाहिँ एउटा युनिक टपिक मा फोकस हुन्छ मेन्टल एन्ड बिहेभियर हेल्थ सम्बन्धी सो हामी एज मच एज डिभर्स गर्न सक्छम सो यदि तपाईहरुले चाहिँ कुनै एउटा स्पेसिफिक टपिक कभर गर्दै हुनुहुन्थ्यो अथवा के गर्नु गरेको हुनुहुन्थ्यो भन्न चाहनुहुन्छ भने चाहिँ प्लीज हामीलाई इमेल गर्नुस् साथसाथै हाम्रो फिडब्याक फर्म मा पनि त्यो चाहिँ लेखिदिनु होला अनि रेजिस्ट्रेसन को लागि चाहिँ कति जनाहरु तपाई हाम्रो नेटवर्क मा रेजिस्टर पनि भइसक्नु भएको छ होला यदि भइसक्नु भएको छैन भने चाहिँ प्लीज रेजिस्टर गर्नु होला अनि एकैछिनमा चाहिँ रितिकाले चाहिँ रेजिस्ट्रेसन सम्बन्धी अझै डिटेल्सहरु पनि उल्लेख गर्छ सो वन्स तप रेजिस्टर भइसक्नु भएपछि चाहिँ हाम्रो अपडेट्सहरु पाउनु हुन्छ हाम्रो वेबिनार सम्बन्धी साथसाथै हाम्रो रेकर्डिङ्सहरु सम्बन्धी साथसाथै अरु हामी डिफरेन्ट प्रोग्रामहरु पनि गर्छम जस्तै अस्ति भर्खर हामीले ग्रान्ड राइटिङ वर्कसप गर्यौं त्यो त्यो कुराहरु चाहिँ तपाईले रेजिस्टर गर्नु भयो भने चाहिँ तपाईको इनबक्समा चाहिँ आउँछम अनि अ कपल अफ हाउसकीपिङ चाहिँ यो वेबिनार चाहिँ 1 घण्टा लामो हुन्छ सो डाक्टर मोरिसन विल गेट 15 minutes presently and it is for Sammy Ponder Mirror to question and answer around Garson. So, um, I mean, let's say open Garson. So, Tara Tiba and Dava is a edit up in the chat, my topic of question or Rakno by when I'm to any address Garson. But this was on the match, I'm a breakout room Garson. So, it is around Ponder Minute Go Nisa, this match, I mean, I'm presently Dinu Baika, um, we've been a discussion question. My right, let's say I'm a discuss Garson. Uh, presenter ko abadi presentation ko abadi ber please mute uh, by ra basi dinu wala uh, kune questions sa bani say please wait for the question and answer around ani uh, basi say titi bala say tapay on mute karna sakno insa hami tapay ko sakti sakti sapay question or address karna kosis karsam tare yedi karna sakino bani say please feel free to email the speaker uh, is that okay with you uh, Joanna yeah, all right. All right. So I just wanted to make sure on that. On the R code, say feedback form, say Ritikali, I am a chat box. My potosa, you could have a dumb important time. I mean, so please, please, please uh, fill out. Conola 
अनि और को क्विक अनाउंसमेंट से आमिले लास्ट वेबिनार में अपनी बनने को थी हम आमिले से रिसर्च ग्रांट से अनाउंस करने को थी हम सो इफ अमंग यू सम ऑफ यू आर ऑलरेडी वर्किंग जस्ट एन रिमाइंडर कि आज ऐसे हम रो लास्ट डेट हो सो आमिले से एक्सेप्ट बन करने को थी हम सो यदि तब पर ले काम कर रहे हैं ना वापस आने से आज नेपाल को मिडनाइट सम्मेलन में से पढ़ाई दिन वाला ना था वास सबमिट करने वाला एंड गुड लक विद दैट ऑल राइट सो विद दैट आई वेल सो दिस इज़ ऑलरेडी बीन कवर्ड सो विद दैट आई विल हैंड ओवर टू माय कॉलेग ट्रिस्टी हु इज़ गोइंग टू इंट्रोड्यूस आवर प्रेजेंट so, namaste good evening sobezanale um so it is my immense pleasure to introduce to you all dr joanna morrison um some of you uh if you been there in the grant writing and networking workshop uh, that took place earlier this month um you must have met her during this speed networking session as well so about dr joanna morrison she has been living in nepal since 2002 um, which is probably why she has a very good Nepali, um, speaking Nepali. Uh, and um, she works for the University College London Institute for Global Health. She is an expert in participatory research methodologies and applied qualitative research and specializes in formative research, process evaluation research, and qualitative creative methodologies. Moreover, she is experienced in using film photography, drama, and art to engage diverse audiences, uh, which we will see today during her presentation as well. Um, she works collaboratively to conduct research with those who have lived experiences of health issues and health, and health systems in low and low income countries and cover a wide range of health issues, including maternal, newborn, and child health, nutrition, health systems, and non-communicable diseases, um, and child marriage, uh, working with partners in Bangladesh, India, Malawi, uh, Nigeria, Nepal, Somalia, and Thailand. Um, she is currently working on re research projects that aim to prevent and control type 2 diabetes in rural Bangladesh, prevent child injury in rural Bangladesh, promote positive mental health through sports in a rural Bharatiya, Nepal, and address anemia in pregnancy in a rural Kapilvastu, Nepal. Um, so yeah, so that's a brief introduction to our presenter today, Dr. Joanna Morrison. Uh, it is a great pleasure to have you here for the uh, webinar today. Uh, and with that, I'll hand it over to you. Thanks, thanks, Dristi. And I'm going to stop sharing my uh, screen and it's all, the floor is yours. Um, namaste. Um, okay. Middle presentation cast Angreshi Mabon for Nita. Um, you know, money made a practice for an early palima, thought of like key prasna Ivani, a tabaki, Buzina Bani, Ekdom Nepalima Bona Saksa, and he sat here Pani Hununta. Well, I saw a funny garden on top. Just dear. Ah, so. As a Kotalfo is about art and ethics. So how can art help us discuss and learn about ethics? So this, uh, this kind of research about ethics was done within a participatory action research project. So that kind is a specific approach to research where people uh, who are experiencing a problem or an issue, work with researchers to analyze that issue, reflect on it, and then take action or and plan to take action to address the problem. Um, so it's, it's a collaborative uh, approach to research, but not everyone experiencing an issue or a problem can participate in the research. It's not really feasible. It's not possible. Um, so often um, you work with a smaller group of people who represent 
a community or represent uh, the people uh, who the, the problem is being experienced by. And one way for those people or that critical reference group, that's sometimes what we call them, uh, one way for that group of, of people to, to represent the, the experience, the lived experience of the problem um, more widely uh, is through peer research. So peer research is when um, someone who has experience of an issue and is participating in a research project goes to talk to their family and friends and neighbors and observes their community um, and brings that data back to the research process. So participant researchers or peer researchers are not usually trained. They don't have training in research methods. They're lay people who have experience of the issue. So this piece of research was focused around the issue of diabetes, type two diabetes. And it was part of a project called the Jeevan Shakti Mela, um, which sought to increase knowledge and understanding to prevent diabetes. And we wanted to inspire other people to do participatory health promotion. So we did participatory action research with artists from the Janakpur Women's Development Center. They were our critical reference group. Um, and then we planned uh, drama and art and uh, a fun fair in Barabiga in the, the park in, in Janakpur and then evaluated what we did. So I'll be talking about the participatory action research that we did to begin with. So these are some of the artists. There are 30 artists at JWDC um, and the purpose of the centre was to empower women uh, who, who traditionally do mightily paintings on the walls of their houses, to empower them through, um, through making money from their art. Um, so many of the artists are illiterate. Um, and marginalized by widowhood, poverty, etc. Um, so we worked with those, those women um, who you can see in the picture. Other uh, key participants were Abruti Anawantika from Herd International, uh, who was our research partner. I had invited uh, them to be here, so I don't think they made it though. <laughs> uh, so, the artists brainstormed some questions that they wanted to ask in their peer research. So the artists were the peer researchers. So um, here they are here about diabetes. And you can see that we sampled men and women with and without diabetes. Awantika also collected data from young people um, and medicine shop owners and health workers. So if we think about um, the search ethics, I just need to move my, move my screen here. Um, if we think about research ethics, these are uh, guiding principles that, um, that we use when we conduct research. So for our research, we thought about um, needing to respect people and a key uh, component for of that is that we ask for consent when we, we, we do some interviews with people. Uh, we also think about the disadvantages or harms that might come to people if they participate in the research and we warn them about those harms. We also seek to engage different types of people and think about um, whether our research is disproportionately affecting some people, so it affects some people more than others. Um, and so those were the, the principles of, of research uh, ethics that we wanted to cover with our, um, with, with the artists, because um, they were quite concerned they wouldn't be able to remember what people said 
because they couldn't make notes. Um, and they were also uh, concerned that if they recorded the interview without doing proper procedures, they might, might get into trouble or people might think they were a journalist and there might be some concerns there. Um, oops, I can't seem to move forward. Hang on a minute, I'll try again. Yes, here we go. So, um, so we, uh, we, we sought to give them some training on ethics and think about ethics and develop a visual consent form, which would remind the artists about the things that you have to say when you take consent and when you are following research ethics. So these are the 14 statements that um, usually you go through when you take consent in an interview. Um, so you tell people about the, the project purpose, the reasons why you interviewed them instead of someone else, voluntary participation, so saying that you don't have to participate if you don't want to, you can stop the interview at any time, the time of the interview, you usually tell people it's like an hour or half an hour. Um, we'd like to record the interview. It will be anonymous. You might, for this research, we thought people might get upset while talking about their diabetes or um, their relatives' diabetes, because some, some people might be suffering from a lot of health problems or economic problems because of their diabetes. So those were the harms that we raised with people. The benefits, um, so with this research, there wasn't immediate benefits. Um, so we talked about longitudinal benefits of the research. The information that will be public, we tell people that also. Um, we ask them if they want to ask any questions. We provide them with our contact information. And then we ask them, do you understand? Do you want to participate? So these were our kind of key components. So we wanted to remind the artists about how uh, about all of these different 14 statements. And so we brainstormed reminder pictures. Um, and as you can see in the, in the first picture there, there's an artist who's sketching the ideas that were brainstormed. Then those, um, you can see Selu is, um, is drawing the, one of the consent pictures. Then we tested them out to see if artists could really remember the components through looking just at the pictures. And then we did more training. There's a one to go giving them some more training and familiarization. So these are the pictures that were developed that were the remainder pictures. So I won't go through them all in detail because I've already gone through every every component listed, but um, you can see, for example, the one in the corner of the ladies holding hands, that's about um, voluntary participation. Um, the, the clock is about how long the interview will take. Um, you can see this one, the lady's mouth is covered. Well, there's a little recorder actually, that's uh, to record the interview. Uh, the lady with her mouth covered is about anonymity, and confidentiality. The next picture is about harms, etc. So you can see those. Um, just to say that this this PDF is available online if anybody wants to see it. Um, so we thought we'd like to evaluate the process, see how it was. So myself, Awantika and Abriti did some observations of the artists doing the interviews. And we also did a debrief with the artists afterwards to see um, how they felt about the process. So what we found um, was that the artists um, uh, didn't need the consent form after the first few interviews. They could remember everything they had to say. So it really was only useful for the first few interviews. We also found that they routinely skipped parts of the form that they didn't think were relevant or they didn't think they needed to see. So um, for example, the reasons for participating and the voluntary participation, they felt that because the participant was in front of them already, 
they had already consented and they had already known why they should be there. <laughs> so um, so that, that kind of made sense. Um, the, another thing that they skipped routinely was about the harms. Um, and that was because they felt that people actually benefited from the interviews. And so they didn't think it was appropriate to mention harms. So this is, in the literature, this has been called a therapeutic misconception. And what, what I want to discuss with you is whether this is really a misconception. Um, why, why should I say that um, interviews are not benefiting people? Why should my knowledge um, or an ethics committee's knowledge um, uh, kind of supersede or uh, take priority as opposed to the artist's knowledge? Because the uh, participatory approach values everyone's knowledge equally and experience equally. And so if the artists think that an interview is beneficial, then who am I to say that it's not beneficial? Um, so the artists, I have a quote there from the artists um, saying, participants think we suffer from this problem and we're sharing our views so that the problem doesn't affect others. So that was the artist, what the artist thought about the participants. Um, so that's a kind of interesting, interesting perspective. So if we think about um, ethics, uh, like I was saying, you, you normally have to submit your ethics form to a committee or a, a review board um, where you try to think about all of the ways that you should respect people or all of the ways that you should um, prevent harm. Um, and you have to think about those in advance and plan for them. But participatory action research is a flexible process. And sometimes your plans change. Sometimes you uh, collect data that means you collect some different data that you hadn't planned. Perhaps you involve someone you hadn't planned to in the beginning. And so it's important to have uh, some kind of ethical review that is iterative. So it, it builds on your, your original thoughts or, and it's relational. So it, it is worked out in relation to the, the participants in the research and, and the, the researchers. Um, and it is able to deal with issues as they emerge. Um, so for example, this issue about harms, we didn't uh, predict that that was going to happen, but, um, it did. So we needed some kind of um, ethical review board to help us with that. So our lessons learned really are that um, the local ethics review board is important because we need, um, we need some help deciding on these, these kind of the ethical issues that emerge through uh, participatory action research. Um, in terms of the visual consent form, we think it really improved comprehension of research ethics. The artists really understood the, um, the value of, of taking, taking consent and, and they, they, they really learned from it and became confident that they could take consent and that they could record um, and that they could convince people that recording, they would, they would treat the recording um, with, with the appropriate confidentiality and, and procedures. So it really helped reduce the stress of the artists. So they became better peer researchers because they were more confident. And one thing which I have to say is that the data were very rich that we, we got with, with, the, with the peer research. So I'm really pleased that we did decide to record the data. <clears throat> Oops. Um, so just, I'm going to finish there, um, just to acknowledge our funders. We're funded by the Wellcome Trust and a UCL Beacon Bursary, and our research partners were HARD and the JWDC. Um, so I had some discussion points, which um, I thought 
might be good for us to, to think about. Um, so one thing is perhaps our peer researchers researchers, are they, should they be considered researchers? Do they need to take formal consent? Um, so another thing to consider might be a local ethics committee versus a, an institutional ethics committee like the NHRC. Um, who should take priority? What if they disagree? Um, and then what are the advantages and disadvantages of those that local ethics um, committee? But I'm happy to take questions first before we start to discuss things. Um, handing over to you, uh, chairs, <laughs> chairpersons. <laughs> thanks, 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 Dr. Mauritian. This is an interesting presentation. The concept itself is very interesting. And then thanks for um, taking us through all of those things up here. So um, let's start with questions. I don't see anything in the chat box, right? Oh, Leanna has a question. Brandon has a ha hand raised. So Brandon, uh, do you wanna go first? Happy for Liana to go first. She, I saw her note first there. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, Liana, do you just want to unmute yourself and just sure. ask the question? Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. That was a fascinating presentation. Uh, I was just curious if you were able to involve the peer researchers in data analysis or interpreting the findings um, in some way, and if so, how? Yeah, we did. Um, so what, uh, like I mentioned, Awantika collected data also, um, and the artist collected data. And so Awantika then wrote reports of the data because she speaks mightily and I, I don't. Um, and uh, so she wrote reports of all of, the, all of the different pieces of data. And then myself and her discussed what we thought were the main, the main findings. Um, and then we presented it to the artists. Um, some of the artists had conducted peer research that wasn't recorded. So they also had things to share um, and experience. So, um, so we, we discussed that as a group to see if they kind of, it was more like a kind of validation, I guess, um, of, the, of what they had found also. Um, and there was some disagreement because they, 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 in their interview, they hadn't come up with those the issues that had come up in another interview, for example. Um, but the, the purpose of kind of analyzing and looking at all of the findings was to, to plan the actions together. So there were things that came out in the data um, that we felt we couldn't really deal with or we didn't know the answers to. And so, um, then we, we we didn't focus on those in the in the activities um and we brought in a health worker to help us get some answers that we didn't know the answer to um so we we kind of sought more knowledge um from outside so that was how we did the analysis thank you all right uh brandon um, thanks so much, Joe. This is a, a fantastic presentation, um, and I love the the artwork. And I just think this is so important and so creative. And and appreciate also sharing the limitations. <clears throat> and when sometimes they were doing the informed consent, they they skipped over certain pieces that legally we feel like we have to do. But from their perspective, that really wasn't pertinent. Um, you probably get this question a lot, and and I apologize if it's if it's a generic question, but <clears throat> We, you know, have tried similar methods, and a real barrier is NHRC and then high-income country uh, institution IRBs here in DC or, or for you in London, um, and just that every single change has to be approved and having to go back to them on anything that involves the consent process and really kind of lack of familiarity with these types of approaches. Um, and ultimately a disservice to participants, to the research, but, but a, a kind of a, a more of a research legal constraint. And I'm just wondering how, how do, and then the funders, right? So wealth, wealth 
um, would also expect in terms of that type of thing. So how how do you push this, which I think is really in the spirit of um, autonomy in terms of, of making decisions to participate versus then these, these quite rigid constraints that a lot of institutions have? Yeah, I think it's a, you know, it's an incredible problem for those of us doing participatory action research or any kind of iterative where we want to be iterative in our approach. It's, it's a real issue. Um, we did actually um, do an interview with someone from the NHRC about our consent form. I didn't want to overload the, the presentation with too many things. Um, and we actually, we interviewed only one person. Um, so uh, it was that very much that person's view. Um, um, and he was of the opinion that we shouldn't be even doing peer research because the data that was collected wouldn't be good and it wouldn't be collected under the right circumstances. And therefore the whole concept of doing a visual consent for illiterate uh, researchers was was completely alien and really he thought that was bad quality research and and we were not protecting participants properly and um, etc so so I really thought ah, okay so we need to actually go go from the approach of actually working with ethics committees to understand participatory action research better and participatory methods better and start from there um, and yeah, I, I think the, the focus often on ethic, ethical review, I think particularly in Nepal, is it's biomedical. Um, it's the, the, a real lack of social scientists um, on the review board. So, um, so yeah, I think maybe that's where we, where we start from. Um, I, I think that the more we push back, <laughs> Um, in at UCL at uh, you know from the UCL Institute uh, Ethics Ethics Board and the more we participate in discussions about that I think things will move forward. Um, but yeah, I think in Nepal there's perhaps further to go um, because of the biomedical uh, focus of the of the review boards. Um, and that was a very long answer. <laughs> no, it's a very long problem. So thank you so much. Thanks. Yes, yes. Uh, thanks, thanks, Dr. Marsh. And so that, that is my question as well. I just as you're presenting all of these things, my initial thought went to like, how do we navigate all of these administrative challenges here in the US, in the Nepal, and then um, for, for you in London? Um, yeah, how do we do that? Yeah. Okay, so um, there's the next question. So uh, the next one is from Drishi. Her question is that the uh, with the research participants being interviewed by peer researchers of same demographic and literacy level, if so, how are the consent recorded? Um, the peer researchers decided who they wanted to do the research with. Um, so they we sort of did a bit of a mapping of, of who was who, who they knew, who, who might be willing to speak to them, who they would feel comfortable speaking to. So um, we did find that um, artists were more comfortable talking to people who were, uh, who had diabetes as opposed to not having diabetes. Um, and they did the consent uh, process, the visual consent, um, without having the recorder on. So after that, the visual consent process happened, um, then they they started recording. Um, so, but, I mean, they were they were more comfortable talking to people who who had diabetes because they were I think they were more interested. Um, they felt like they didn't really know what to ask people who who were like them because they they felt like well we know the same that they know and we're having the same opinions about these things so. So what can I learn? Um, um, but they did, they did learn something and we certainly learned something. Um, but the interviews with people with diabetes were, uh, they were much more probing and artists were much more um, keen to do those interviews. Thank you. Uh, Dristi, you have your hand raised. Is it a follow-up question? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Joanna, for the presentation and, and for the explanation to my question as well. Um, actually, my question was also in line with what Brandon asked before about like what NHRC requires is basically a recording, either a written signed form or you know, verbal consent. So how how was that done is my curiosity. <laughs> Um, so we we decided um, before uh, we we did this process of the visual consent that we would um, that Awantika would be doing the interviews and so that is the ethics approval that we submitted and we got approved. Um, but it was only you know through the process of of doing the research we thought that the 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 artist would do peer research just by talking and observing and um, and then feeding back to us. Mm -hmm. um, but we found that they 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 weren't confident doing that and they forgot most of the things that they had they had heard. So it was they were uh, you know they were the ones who were driving the, <laughs> the visual consent process. And so we just went ahead and did that. We didn't get additional ethical approval for that. Um, I think that's what you mean, right? <laughs> Right, right. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So uh, let's move on to the next question. I think we can uh, combine the two questions together. So uh, Kalpanaji has a question on like, uh, she says that there are different ways people learn, memorize and understand things. So how do you ensure the participant who learn and memorize through auditory were actively understanding the constant process in this study through visualization? And uh, Susanna G also asks about uh, more clarity on the visual consent. Um, so uh, we we discussed ethics um, and the research process through uh, with the artists through games, through a quiz, uh, through <laughs> uh, multiple methods, um, through art also. Um, so we we were quite sort of. We were quite clear with the artists what we didn't know and what they didn't know and what they wanted to learn and what we wanted to learn and we all kind of learned about diabetes in in our context um in that context um and and so that's how how we kind of explain the the research process and we did lots of communications games and that that kind of thing so um we, I'm, I'm confident that the artists really understood what, you know, what, what they were doing and, and what they wanted to do. And, and they were, they were very much, you know, they wanted to do the research. Um, in regards to the, the participants who they, who they did the peer interviews with, um, I think that they did understand because the artists did go through the, you know, the consent form. So um, one thing to say is that the consent form was just for the artist. Um, so it wasn't for the participant. Um, so I think that uh, we need, we always need to check that participants understand um, why the study is happening. Um, and, uh, you know, if they had any questions, they they could have contacted us, and we didn't get any anyone contacting um, us. So I I think that I think that they they did understand, um, but obviously you you can't you can't be sure. Um, but because another thing to say is it was part of a process. So the interviews happened, and then we invited all the people that came to the drama and to the mela um, and then we went back to some people and asked them what they thought of it so there was a lot of interaction with with researchers as well as with artists who are lay researchers um, so I think there was there was a lot of opportunity for um, for follow-up questions if, if people didn't understand 
Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Joanna. There are a lot of questions coming on, uh, but I'm just looking at the time and I don't think we'll have enough time to go through all of this. Um, so we have questions from Sami. We have questions from Prasansa and I had my own set of questions as well, but I'm just stopping here for the sake of the time. So uh, person, so please feel free to uh, answer those questions over email or if you happen to miraculously get in the same breakout room as the uh, question and answer, I mean, the, 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 the people who have asked the questions as well. So um, for the next 10 to 15 minutes, what we will be doing is that we'll be going into breakout room and then we will be doing some of the uh, discussion questions that uh, Joanna put up before as well. So. Uh, Let's spend around uh, now six forty two. Let's spend around like thirteen to fifteen minutes of time now to going to the breakout room. So Ritika, uh, if you could open up the breakout room, then uh, we could all go there.
All right, so um, welcome everyone back. I know we had very little time, too many things to talk, talk about, and then we're just caught short. So apologies for that, but uh, need to uh, make sure that we are on time as well. So uh, in the next five minutes, what uh, we are going to do is that uh, we're going to ask each of the um, each of the team to quickly in less than a minute talk about what they discussed and then uh, we can move forward on that. So um, I can start from my own group uh, to facilitate the process. So we had a group of people, uh, most of them from Nepal, and we had also a colleague from Bangladesh. And then uh, what we talked about was that uh, the con even if it's a peer process, then there needs to be a, some sort of constant. Uh, content and then our colleagues talk about that there needs to be a rigor in the research so that might be required and all and then also um, uh, one of our one of our team members said that uh, we need to make sure that something unethical might not happen so there needs to be something that's going to bound people together up in there as well but uh, our colleagues were very much open saying that for some forms of studies like ethnographic studies and all that might not be possible and that might not be required as well so um, maybe it's because of our how our research areas are but uh, that's what we talked about so uh, over to the second group i'm not sure who the second group is though ritika if you are tracking it uh, alpana ji can go next oh okay <laughs> Um, so thank you. Thank you so much, Ritika, ma'am. And also thank you so much for the uh, team members who were in my group. So we actually had a uh, great discussion. Uh, the first one, uh, first question was which uh, should take priority, local or institutional ethic committee? One So Abdomati is Malikati depends on ethical clearance came out. If it is about work, local ethical committee the value globally valid ultimately NHRC ethical committee institutional ethical clearance important local depends on ethical clearance So second question what are the advantages? and disadvantages of defining local ethical principle. This is the advantage of local ethical principles. Uh, more clear understanding of local level. It will be more easy. Cooperation is more easy. So, currently, the advantage of the advantage. Likewise, disadvantage of the context appropriate. This is the disadvantage of the uh, uh, different points rather than disadvantage and advantage, it is of compulsory local approval. Necessity and it is also a part of consent as well. So if I missed anything, my group, please feel free to add. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks, Kalpana Ji. So um, maybe Drishti can go next from the next group. Thanks, Aharata. Yeah, so um, we might have steered a bit away from the discussion points, but no, it was interesting. Yeah, it was interesting nevertheless. All right. So um, we kind of focused on the first and third question. Um, the first one about our peer researchers, researchers, should they, ta uh, should they have to take um, formal consent so basically is much a um peer researchers or company researchers we have to consider them as researchers since they're like um participating uh collecting data and everything and um some of our uh, group members also added that uh rich data important day um because uh, wow, related data collection and they are like doing a form of research, um, they should also uh, take consent from the participants. It's a formal, informal, cost of consent. Uh, Julia Agina NHRC ko um uh, reservations or ko kura gore ko thiyo tyo kura arman discuss bako thiyo. Ani tis maache um 
just so um, I think uh, we had a doctor in our group and uh, he shared that um, within clinical practices, clinical research, just so uh, given implied uh, consent or uh, um, uh, non uh, more verbal consent or case studies or research or so it's not just social sciences uh medical so two approaches or not just like formal documented process now by pani bhanne kura haru um tin haru aayeko thiyo um ra um just uh, defining local ethical principles or um the local ethical principles define no parsat unarko views or lino che parsa just like we um you know we test um kune amro uh interview guides or tools or agadi test for is a so um Consent company, agadi test by so local ethical principles are which are like a new scorn or so on. But at the same time, Jun Amru, a general ethical uh, principles, a universal ethical principles are with you or Rupa Nich or not a mill day now on the discussions. Yeah, I'm a group of tobacco with you. And I think that's that's mostly it. Thank you. That's, that's, that's... Uh, so thanks, thanks, Rishi. Uh, I'm the last group. So I think uh, join a top of So very short, very short, because we are already out of time. Uh, what you all discuss about. Anyone uh, in your group can go. Um, we talked we talked about Prasanta's question, which was about training of, of researchers and how long that took. Um, we also, um, Faith, what was your last, was the last thing that we discussed? Yeah, we were quite lucky because we had Joanna in our, in our group so we could keep grilling her on, <laughs> on some of her, uh, the questions. But so we were also talking about sort of, I was quite interested in the idea around interviewing um, an NHRC reviewer. So we were just sort of discussing that a little bit and sort of what that involved and um, what they got out of that really. Mm -hmm. Thanks, thanks, Faith. Um, yeah, with that, I um, think it's time to wrap it up. But uh, Joanna, thank you so much for such an excellent presentation and make all of us think outside the box. I think a lot of us have been too much engaged in a traditional form of research. So something that's very different makes us think very differently. And also, uh, I think this is not the end of the question, but just a starting of a conversation where we think a lot about how do we think outside the box? How do we maintain the balance about uh, like having a different form of conscience as at the same time, making sure that the rigor of the research is maintained? How do we make sure that the institutional entities are there and the local entities are there? And how do we balance this? I think these are all great, great, great points that we all need to think about. We all have our own experience on um, like our, our own our field, but I'm sure that all of us, for all of us, this is going to come handy. So uh, we're a little over time, so I uh, apologize for that. But thanks again, everyone, for sticking through the whole hour. And then once again, thank you so much, Joanna, for the wonderful presentation. And then uh, last but not the least, Ritika has sent an email and also has put up in the chat box. So please make sure that you fill up the feedback form. And for those of you who are submitting the Global Mental Health Grant, make sure you submit it by midnight Nepal time. All right. Thanks, everyone. And see you next month. Thank you. Right, bye. bye.